Tomorrow, voters in Wisconsin will decide the balance of the state Supreme Court in the most expensive judicial election in history. Judy Woodruff recently traveled to Wisconsin to see how the state's sharp political divides are shaping what could be the most important election of 2023. It's part of her series, America at a Crossroads. After a long winter, small signs of spring in the upper Midwest. But as Wisconsin thaws, the bitter winds of politics are again sweeping the Badger State. This time around, though, the race isn't for Congress, governor, or the presidency. It's for the state Supreme Court. This election is officially nonpartisan. Neither of the candidates will have a D or an R next to their names on the ballot. But given the deep divide here and the fact that the state Supreme Court will play a role in deciding the future of everything from abortion to redistricting to election laws in Wisconsin, voter interest is high and politics has been infused from the start. We cannot take our foot off the pedal for a second. The election pits liberal Milwaukee County Judge Janet Protasewicz Janet Protasewicz is a threat to our liberties. And against conservative Daniel Kelly, a former state Supreme Court justice who lost re-election in 2020. The Wisconsin Supreme Court has reconvened. Tomorrow's winner could cast the tie-breaking vote on an evenly split court. Hello there, I'm Judy Woodruff. So I wanted to hear from voters in this sharply divided state at a time of growing partisanship, not just here, but in courts across the country. We've never seen anything quite like this. Look, Charlie Sykes is a longtime political commentator in Wisconsin. Once a conservative talk show host, he founded the center-right news and opinion site, The Bulwark. Good morning and welcome to the Bulwark podcast. I think that in the last decade or so, Wisconsin has felt like it is the ground zero for a lot of the issues that we have in American politics. Mm -hmm. And maybe the polarization that we see nationally um, was, uh, was foreshadowed here in Wisconsin. It's really scary because there's so much on the line. 25 year old so Sydney line, Lee sometimes. has lived in Milwaukee her whole life. She's been canvassing and making calls in support of Protosewitz. We have a lot of issues that are becoming partisan, um, but really they're human issues, and human issues should never be a partisan thing. Because it is so polarizing, we need somebody who's equitable, and Janet is equitable. Among those human issues, Lee says, are LGBTQ and abortion rights, especially after the U.S. Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade last year. I'm a black queer woman and I want to make sure that I can marry who I want to marry one day. I want to make sure that if I need to have an abortion or if I need a medical procedure that I shouldn't need clearance for to do something that's for my, my choice in my body, like I should be able to make decisions for myself. What does your future look like if Justice Kelly is the winner? It looks like me moving. While Protosewitz hasn't declared how she'd rule if Wisconsin's 1849 ban on abortion made its way to the state's high court, she has been clear on what she calls her values. That should be the woman's right to make the reproductive health decision, period. If my opponent is elected, I can tell you with 100% certainty that 1849 abortion ban will stay on the books. Kelly has downplayed his own past statements opposing abortion and the endorsements he's received from anti-abortion groups. Instead, he criticizes his opponent for openly discussing her views. See, this is the problem that you have when you have a candidate who does nothing but talk about her personal politics. Judges who put their own agendas above the law. Kelly and his supporters have also tried to paint Protosewitz as weak on crime for sentences she handed down as a judge in Milwaukee. County. A long history of letting dangerous criminals back into our streets. Directly undermining the work of our officers and putting your family at risk. That charge, which Protosewitz disputes, has influenced retired Milwaukee police officer Gary Post to vote for Kelly. Definitely there should be leniency. However, what I've seen far too much is violent persons who are living a lifestyle. Um, over many, many years and sometimes decades of violence. And, and that has to be addressed. 
Bottom line, Poe says he believes Protosewitz is too progressive. Our country is going into such a liberal um, pathway that it's almost gone too far. And I think Jenna Protosewitz is more of a liberal, steering it still in that direction. Remember this? But Protosewitz has called Dan Kelly extreme, criticizing his work for the Republican Party and his role in a fake elector scheme after President Trump lost Wisconsin in 2020. Kelly advised Trump operatives as special counsel to overturn the will of the people. Janet upholds the Constitution. The race has already drawn record-breaking millions in ad spending. I'll always protect the rule of law. This is one of those cases where the hype is not overstated because here in Wisconsin, everything is at stake. We now have um, extreme partisanship, but we also have gridlock between a legislature dominated by Republicans and a Democratic governor. Nothing is going to happen, nothing is going to change, so everything shifts to the Supreme Court. And no one's making any pretense that this is anything other than partisan. And so it's gonna be hard to go back to a, we ought to elect judges based on their credentials or their judicial temperament. That era seems to have been beaten to death with hammers. Charlie Sykes traces much of the polarization in Wisconsin back over a decade to then Governor Scott Walker's Act 10, a measure that, among other things, effectively ended collective bargaining for the state's public employees. It sparked months of intense protests at the state capitol and exposed divisions still seen today. One of the things that, as I look back on it, it, at a certain point, our politics becomes about the fight. The fight becomes about the fight. It becomes about us versus them. The actual policy matters less than beating the other guy. 90 days to win elections. In the years since Act 10, Wisconsin's statewide elections have flipped back and forth, many by razor thin margins. Donald Trump will carry the state of Wisconsin. He will and in 2016, win. Donald Trump defied the polls to win the state by less than 25,000 votes, a victory that was key to handing him the presidency. We thought the Republican Party in Wisconsin was people like Paul Ryan. It was people like Ryan's Priebus. It was not people from the MAGA world. However, as we've seen, as soon as Donald Trump uh, nailed down the nomination, the centrifugal forces, the gravitational pull of partisan loyalties was very, very intense. And that took a lot of us by surprise. But in retrospect, you look back and you see that these divisions, this sense of us versus them was a pre-existing condition here that Trump was able to exploit and take advantage of. In 2020, fortunes shifted. President Biden narrowly won Wisconsin, but an attempt by President Trump to overturn the election results reached the state Supreme Court, which rejected the lawsuit by just one vote. 37-year-old Green Bay resident John McKinney grew up in a conservative household and long considered himself a Republican. But McKinney, who volunteers at this boat shop teaching craftsmanship skills to kids, says that changed with the 2016 election. As soon as Donald Trump became president, I, I mean, the, the party was, was foreign to me. They're too focused on power, seats, taking over, you know, controlling the various levers of government, and they don't really care about, you know, kind of the foundations of, of what their ideology is. So when it comes to the state Supreme Court race. There's other races on the ballot that I'll be voting for, but um, after kind of reading about the two candidates, I don't feel like I can vote for either of them. It builds kind of community. McKinney says he's seen politics in Wisconsin become more tribal. He's concerned about the lack of any substantive conversations around policy differences, which has led to the atmosphere surrounding tomorrow's election. I'm absolutely disgusted by it. You know, Supreme Court justices, I look at as kind of the last line of defense. You know, lawmakers make laws, judges make sure that those laws are legal, they abide by our Constitution. And in this race, it's, it's a circus. If it wasn't important, would political leaders go to such great lengths to try to secure their preferred candidates onto courts? And I think the answer is no. Harvard professor Maya Sen researches American law and politics. Her 2020 book, The Judicial Tug of War, explored how politicians and ideology have shaped the U.S. court system. 
In the 1980s, Sen says, politicians began to realize the importance of courts in achieving policy goals, particularly with the rise of the anti-abortion movement. That trend continued in the decades that followed, highlighted by the Supreme Court's decision in Bush v. Gore. After that point, every nomination onto something like the U.S. Supreme Court rose dramatically in importance. So it's really been over the last, you know, 20, 25 years where we've had this like partisan climate and, and that's just increased over time. For example, Sen's research has shown that federal judges appointed by President Trump are more conservative than those named by President George W. Bush. And as in Wisconsin, with polarization comes a heightened role for the courts. As the other branches of power, the you know, the Congress and the presidency, as they become increasingly gridlocked um, because of partisan conflict, that leaves the courts as being particularly important for things that um, many Americans care about, like abortion and gun rights and civil rights and religious liberties. In fact, a poll from the nonpartisan Pew Research Center found that after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, Americans' view of the high court hit its lowest favorability rating in years, and the partisan divide in those views grew wider than at any point in decades. People are very deferential to courts. They will follow court rulings, but the more that they perceive the courts as being you know, driven by politics and not by law, the more skeptical they'll be of the court's legitimacy. And so the natural extension to, of that is that they might be more skeptical of the rulings themselves and they might be less inclined to follow them. Some of that skepticism is already weighing on Wisconsin voters like John McKinney in Green Bay. You know, you always want to think the person elected is doing what they believe is right. But there'll always be a question of, you know, was it, you know, the special interest money that was, that was donated? Are they returning a favor? Charlie Sykes sees this moment as particularly painful for his home state. Wisconsin had a long tradition of being a laboratory of democracy. And now to see us falling into this hole, it's, it's disturbing because it, it feels as if dysfunction is the new normal and no one knows where it's going. Here in Wisconsin, you know, these are decent people. The you know, people who actually care about their neighbors. And so you just have to have a, a confidence in the underlying decency of people, you know, becoming disgusted with what's happening with our politics. But I'm not sure we're there yet. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Judy Woodruff in Milwaukee.